And thank you, Karina. Now, it is getting late, it's getting warm. If any of you are getting thirsty, just a, it's a bit late for a housekeeping announcement, but there is a water bubbler against that white building there if you're thirsty. And uh, it is getting late in the proceedings. How's all your attention spans holding out? I am the last speaker, so uh, just hang on just a little bit longer. Thank you all for coming. And um, it's Ron, Ron Lopert again. Now, it is encouraging to see so many people in New Zealand becoming aware and concerned about the proposed Trans-Pacific Partnership deal uh, and turning out in numbers um, in this, on this nationwide day of action. Now, it's, it's really good to see so many people in Tauranga today, as I said before, considering it's a conservative bastion, we're doing well. Now, I am speaking here, my name is Ron Lopert, I'm speaking here today first and foremost as a private citizen, a concerned citizen, and as a local uh, branch member of the Green Party. My views on the TPPA were articulated perfectly in a recent article by rising Green Party star Barry Coates. Barry warns that when somebody tries to sell you a deal labeled free trade, you need to read the fine print. Free often means freedoms for big companies with the costs borne by the rest of us. As plenty of speakers have pointed out, the TPPA has 29 chapters, but only five really relate to trade as we know it. Most chapters are trying to remove laws and regulations that are obstacles for multinational companies. But regulations, even if they're imperfect, are there for a reason to protect workers, consumers, the environment, and the economy. The details of the TPPA, as we know, have been kept secret from us, but we do know from leaks that there are chapters on intellectual property rights, stronger patent rights, meaning higher costs for our medicines, removing regulations on GMO food labeling, allowing foreign ownership of our assets, restricting internet freedoms and extending copyright. And these are not clearly just trade issues. But probably the most contentious and worrying part of this deal is one that would really push corporate control over many aspects of our lives. It would undermine democracy, government, and our national sovereignty. What I'm referring to, of course, is the Investor State Dispute Settlement abbreviated as ISDS. The dangerous, that's the dangerous mechanism at the heart of the TPPA that allows foreign multinationals to sue coast governments over laws and regulations that may restrict their ability to make profits. It allows cases against the government to be taken outside of our established legal system and heard by an unaccountable arbitration panel of highly paid corporate lawyers. Corporations can claim compensation of tens or hundreds of millions of dollars, which taxpayers, that's us, have to pay. And an extreme example, a Swedish utility company, which operates two nuclear plants in Germany, demanded compensation of about, wait for it, $5 billion under an ISDS clause in an investment treaty. And that's when the German government tried to close nuclear power plants um, in Germany after the Fukushima disaster, and that was but with popular support. Another Swedish company is suing the government of Quebec over their moratorium on fracking. Other cases would undermine workers' rights and minimum wages. Veolia, this is a bit closer to home, Veolia, the French company that runs the Auckland trains, is currently suing Egypt over an increase in their minimum wage. The threat of being sued for cases that typically cost many millions of dollars to defend will mean there is a chilling effect, which I think Jody referred to before. Um, so what it means is that governments won't regulate because they are worried about being sued. This is already happening. New Zealand isn't passing the, um, a law on plain packaging of cigarettes for fear of being sued. And that the tobacco giant, Philip Morris, is suing Australian and Uruguayan governments over their plain packaging laws. Many of the corporations which appear to have access to the negotiating documents, unlike us, the public, 
those corporations can afford to tie up the government in enormously expensive arbitration processes held in secretive overseas courts in a very flawed um, procedure, I must um, add. However, this deal does not allow, in reverse, it does not allow governments to sue the corporations for harm that they may cause to the public or the environment. There are hundreds of other laws and policies that could be overturned as well. And the TPPA will be binding on both central and local governments. Shamefully, the government has said that there will be no opportunity, as speakers have pointed out, no opportunity for informed public debate or parliamentary scrutiny prior to signing. There was no discussion about the proposed Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement during the election campaign, and the government cannot claim a mandate for signing it. If we want to act effectively against climate change, tackle inequality, and protect democracy, we must prevent the TPPA from giving away the right of our government to regulate. But there is some good news. Opposition to this ISDS is growing. A report from the UN Conference on Trade and Development reveals that more than 40 countries are very concerned about international agreements similar to the TPPA. Those countries are reviewing their current agreements and refusing to negotiate any more. Some countries like Brazil have never signed agreements with ISDS provisions and they are doing fine economically without giving away democratic rights under ISDS. South Africa says it will withdraw from treaties with ISDS clauses, and India is considering doing the same. Indonesia plans to let such treaties lapse when they come up for renewal. The investor state dispute settlement mechanism has become so controversial that it threatens to scupper trade deals between the European Union and the USA and Canada. But countries do have options for investment agreements. They could ensure compliance with a number of UN treaties and agreements that regulate multinationals. This would ensure that they respect the environment, abide by ILO core labor rights, pay fair taxes, avoid corruption, and invest only when there is informed consent by the public prior to it. The strong message coming out is that countries need to provide the sound regulation of multinationals rather than giving them more rights under agreements like this TPPA. And more good news, citizens' movements have defeated these sort of agreements before. Powerful campaigns stopped the Multilateral Agreement on Investment, that's the uh, MAI, in 1998. And proposals at the World Trade Organization talks in 2003 as well. So we need to do that again. Thousands of Kiwis mobilized against the TPPA last November. There have been strong statements of concern from medical professionals calling for a health assessment, from lawyers and legal associations, and from non-government organizations, NGOs, and trade unions. But we need to do more than go to occasional marches and rallies like this. This is the time when voices of all New Zealanders should be heard. The Green Party has led questioning of the TPPA in Parliament, and the movement of people who are concerned about this deal is growing. So Barry Coates, that I mentioned before, issued this appeal, write to your MP, talk to others in the community, in your community, about the TPPA and activate them to mobilize others. Let's swamp the newspapers, the radio channels, the local boards and councils, parliament and social media. And visit www.itsourfuture.org.nz for further useful information. So in summary, let's face it, this Trans-Pacific Partnership is not an agreement, it's a deal worked out in secret without consultation or the agreement of the public nor our representatives in Parliament. It is not serving our interests. And uh, while the skies were threatening to rain on our parade here today, um, let's hope the voices of thousands of Kiwis around New Zealand drench Tim Grocer and the National Government's parade. So, final words, keep the pressure up. Keep making noise, don't let them ignore us. Now that's all I have to say, but before I finish, I just want to say a big thank you to all of the volunteers, entertainers, uh, and the speakers um, who have all done so much to make this day a, a success. So thank you all for listening. I'm the last speaker. Thank you all.